Hello and thank you for watching my video. Today we will be talking about understanding layer 3 redundancy by me, Astrid Krasnici. Objectives for this lesson is to describe routing issues in connecting and connection to redundancy, explain the router redundancy process and what happens when a failover occurs, identify HS HSRP and VRRP as a layer 3 redundancy protocol, Configure basic HSRP. Describe the idea behind HSRP interface tracking. Describe the idea behind HSRP load balancing. And identify GLBP as a load balancing redundancy protocol. The need for default gateway redundancy. Okay, I want you to imagine this. We have two routers, router A and router B. These two routers, they got connection towards the internet, ISP. And Router A IP address is 10.1.1.1 Router B IP address is 10.1.1.2 And they got a connection on the internal network or LAN With, On the LAN we have three PCs PC A or first PC has got IP address 10.1.1.1.1 With a slash 8 or 255.0.0.0 The second PC has got an IP address of 10.1.1.1.2 with a subnet mask 255000 and PC3 has got a IP address 10.1.1.103 with a subnet mask of 255.0.0.0 Now these three, three PCs that we have we have to give a ga default gateway Now we have two choices we can do a ga default gateway router A or we can do a default gateway router B they can exit the network or local area network through both of the routers your choice say that we choose to do a default gateway 10.1.1.1 so all the PCs they will use this as a default gateway if they want to go to the internet um, that's gonna be okay until we have a problem because we want to use the if if this link fails we want to transfer all the packets through uh, router B okay so all the client machines, they're going to send the packets towards router A. And everything is fine when everything is working. Excellent. Now we'll see when there's a problem of when that link fails. Because the default gateway for these PCs is 10.1.1.1, which is that router. They're going to just continue sending the packets towards that router. Even though all the packets that will fail because the link has broken down, all the link has failed then all the packets that will be dropped. We have waiting a working link on this side towards router B, but the PCs, they, not, they don't know that. You gave them a gateway 10.1.1.1, that's what they're going to send the packets to. Here comes uh, redundancy. Router A and router B, they can create this a virtual router with IP address 10.1.1.1, sorry, 10.1.1.10 or 10.1.1.10, they create this virtual router and they keep it alive. This router or this virtual router doesn't exist. Router A and router B, they're going to uh, answer towards that router, for that router. So we have something called active and standby. So first router that is going to be active is going to be uh, replying any, any uh, messages towards that virtual router. So now we change the IP address from 10.1.1.1 to the virtual router, which is 10.1.1.10. All the gateway of the PCs has been changed. So now, the PCs, when they send the packets, they will send towards the active router. It's the same as we had before. So all the packets are going to go towards the active router, but they are not sending it to 10.1.1.1. They are sending it to 10.1.1.10. Now, if the link fails, like we had earlier, because they're sending them to 10.1.1.10 and this standby becomes the active router now all the packets are going to start flowing that way these PCs they don't know that one of the router has failed they don't have to know the packets are going to just keep flowing like nothing happened on the network one way to achieve near 100% network uptime is to use a gateway redundancy, redundancy protocol 
ensuring that user traffic immediately and transparently recovers from first hop failures in a network edge devices or access circuits. By sharing an IP address and a MAC layer 2 address, two or more routers can act as a single virtual router. So we ha can have two or more routers on the LAN. The members of the virtual routing router group continually exchange status messages. This way, one router can assume the routing responsibility of another should it go out of commission for either planned or unplanned reasons. Hosts continue to forward IP packets to consistent IP and MAC address and the changeover of devices during the routing is transparent. Gateway routing uh, redund sorry. Gateway redundancy protocol type, we have three types, hot standby routing protocol, HSRP, virtual routing, uh, router redundancy protocol, VRRP, and gateway load balancing protocol, GLBP. Hot standby routing router protocol, it's a Cisco proprietary, HSRP group numbers, we can have group from 0 to 255, and are only significant to the interface, HS HSRP virtual MAC address is on the range of 000.0c07.ac and then the group number. If you have group 1, for example, it will be 01, group 2, 02, and so on, where the last 8 bits represent the standby group. HSRP priority ranges from 0 to 255. The default is 100. The default hello timer is 3 seconds, hold down timer is 10 seconds. Preempt is not enabled by default. Cisco devices by default use the plain, test, plain text string Cisco for authentication. Plain text or MD5 authentication can be used. Active router election, the highest priority wins highest IP wins the tie. If we have if we leave the priority to default of 100, then the highest IP address wins the tie. The router's priority will be decremented by the associated value default 10 if the tracked interface fails. HSRP multicast to all routers address 224.0.02 on UDP port 1985. To configure HSRP, we have those two routers A and B. Now we configure the interface with IP address, no shutdown, we know that by now, both of the routers. Then we create standby and then the group number. On this case we have group 1 and we give an IP address 10.1.1.10 on this case. So we created the virtual router by just typing standby 1 and then the IP address of that virtual router. The same number on both neighbors, so we have to if you want to make these two routers keep this virtual router alive, then they have to have the same group number. Standby 1, IP, same IP address. And then standby 1, priority 110. The default is 100. Higher is better. So whatever wins the, this election is going to become the active router. So router A just became the active router because we left router B alone the default and standby preempt preempt for example if this interface goes down this active is going to move to router B he's going to become B he's going to become the active if router A or this interface goes back up the preempt enables that router to uh, become active or take the active again in HSRP version 1 the group numbers can be any values between 0 to 2 to 5 5 but must be the same on the both routers. If the router does not have a preempt configured, a router that boots up faster than the others in the standby group uh, becomes the active router, regardless of the configured priority. Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol, VRRP, star standard based on alternative to HSRP, defined in RFC 2338, VRRP refers to the active router as a master router. All others are the backup in the backup state. VRRP advertisements are sent in one second intervals by default. Backup routers can optionally learn the interval from the master router. Configuration examples for VRRP: we have we got to go to the interface, 
give an IP address for that interface and then all the commands that are similar to uh, HSRP the only this time they start with VRRP so here we have the priority and then the IP address track uh, we will talk about what's this track interface and the decrement um, if I go back to one of these slides yeah this one now this this uh, router or whatever it is an active router the standby router is going to track this interface the interface towards the internet for example if this interface goes down then this router is going to the priority is, is going to decrement by 10 by default but you can set it up so much so it will become if you set the preempt on this side he will become the active router because this interface has gone down so you set one of the interfaces as a to track in okay back to our slides then uh, we have a gateway load balancing protocol or GLBP gateway load balancing protocol is a Cisco proprietary and acts like HSRP or VRRP with a true load balancing capability all the routers in the group forward the traffic simultaneously configuration is very similar to HSRP that you need to configure you have to go to the interface give an IP address for that interface and then the GLBP commands they start with GLBP 10 that's a group number then the IP address the virtual routers IP address okay now I will do a demonstration on the configuring HSRP